Look at this thing of beauty. I do love a nice bit of silk screen. So my ESP32 ZX Spectrum project is fully funded on crowd supply, and I've started ordering components. So I've done a massive order for displays. So each layer of this has 10 displays, and there's five layers, so that's 50 displays, and I got another three boxes. So what I wanted to do was make sure these displays actually work with the current PCBs. And they do really nicely. So it's now time to do another bulk order of PCBs. As always, I'll be using PCB Way for the um, PCBs and assembly. They've worked really well. can recommend them. Check out the link in the description. They've done a great job on all the prototypes. But before doing this bulk order, I wanted to make a couple of tweaks. One of the things that has occurred to me is that we have this lovely full colour silk screen on the front of the board, but pretty much nothing on the back. This feels like a bit of a waste of real estate, so I've designed some nice digital information to fill this space. It is surprisingly easy to get quite detailed silkscreen into KiCad. So you can see I've got quite a nice uh, one for my speaker here, which shows you where to place the speaker. Now you can of course use the uh, graphics tools built into KiCad. We have lines, arcs, squares, circles, polygons, and text, but it's not the easiest thing to use. So I much rather use a um, graphics design tool. So as I say, this is reasonably straightforward, but there are a few wrinkles to be aware of. So I want to go through my process just to document it, mostly for myself, to be honest. So I'm using my design tool. It's called Affinity Designer. Now there's a few interesting things. So when we do a new document, now I know that my, um, my ESP32 board is 233 millimeters by 144. Now, most design software will have something called a DPI, so that's dots per inch. So what we can do is we can use this dots per inch and we can use the size that we want to work out how many pixels we end up with. So if we do um, 233 millimeters in inches, and we can see that's 9.17 inches. So if we do 9.17 times 300, you'll see that we'll end up with a document of around 2,700 pixels. So obviously my design software is paid for and quite expensive, but there are some really nice open source software. Uh, one of them is Photopia. Now you can see in the setup for this, it also lets us specify millimeters. So we could do the same thing. So 233 by 144. Now you see here, it's only using 72 DPI. Now that's pretty good for displaying things on the screen and it's probably okay for silk screen to be honest but you can just bump this up to 300 dots per inch and you can see it's adjusted our width and height so we'll put those back to what we want so another popular tool is inkscape so in here you create a new document and then you go file document properties and here you can specify the size in millimeters as well so we can do 233 by 144 and then when we export, we'll set the dots per inch for this, or you can go over here and we can set the DPI here. I'm gonna stick with my nice design tool. So what I've got here, I've got a nice bit of text and some description. I've done all the GPIO pins, so it'll be very easy as a quick reference to see what's going on. There's a QR code, so we can jump straight to the ESP32 rainbow site. And I've done a quick sort of sketch of the board and all of the uh, connectors, so the speaker, headphone, expansion port, quick connectors, USB-C, um, another quick connector, the SD card, just so you can flip the board over and have a quick reference to see what, um, what the board actually does. So I've exported this to a PNG and we'll jump into KiCad and load it up. So over in KiCad, what we do is we click on the image converter. So this converts bitmap images to schematic symbols or PCB footprints. So we click on that and it opens up. And now we can load in our source image so if I load in my silk screen image, then you can see it's been pulled in and it looks pretty good. Now what's interesting is obviously in KiCad, silk screen can only have black or white, so it can't do shades of gray. Now, if we slide this slider, you can see a slightly interesting effect. You can see that our lines and our text get thinner and thicker depending on where we put this black and white threshold. Now, we don't really want that to happen. Ideally, I want something WYSIWYG. So what's going on? Well, let's have a look at the image. So here's my silk screen that I've exported. Now, what you can see, if we zoom in really closely, you can see that there are actually shades of gray in this image. So what's happening is my graphics tool is using anti-aliasing to make this display nicely. 
Now, the problem with that is it means we don't have exactly what we see on the screen, because you see here as a line, it starts to mount alias in because this isn't exactly on the pixel boundary. So what I can do in my tool and other tools will be able to do this is I can select everything and then I can choose not to anti-alias. So I can force off, which is what I've done here. Now, if I export the image now and we take a look at it, so let's open up this version, which has the anti-aliasing switched off. And then we zoom in and you can see that all we have are black or white pixels. Now, if we go back to KiCad, and if we replace the image I loaded with the version without aliasing, so back silk screen, no anti-alias, then you can see now this slider has no effect. So we're getting exactly what we see in our graphics tool on the screen here. Now you can see up here that the dots per inch has been pulled in, so it knows it's 300 dots per inch, and that's how it works out what the size should be. And you can actually modify all of this, so you can go and change the DPI. This is really handy if you've downloaded an image off the internet that's not 300 DPI, or it's a different width and height, and you want to adjust it. So you can modify all of this stuff, but I'll leave mine in millimeters, and um, we've got our nice image. So what we do now is we just do export to clipboard. You can export to file and create a footprint, but I find it faster just to export to clipboard. Now if we go to KiCad, and we open up our PCB. So here's our PCB display. We can just paste this in. I need to flip it to put it on the back of the silk screen. And then we place it where we want it. So I want it around about here. And then the only thing you have to remember to do is if you look closely here, there's this um, reference for the silk screen. So we double click on that and we make it not visible. Otherwise, it will show up on our design. So that's now got our silk screen in. And I think the best way to preview this is normally to go into a 3D viewer. So if we open up the 3D viewer, and we just position it so it's in the right place. Come on, KiCad, behave, you're making me look silly. So there we have our front. And if we flip over, we now have the nice back of our silk screen. So that's looking pretty good. So this is all ready to actually um, send off to PCB way. So I need to order around 300 boards. So that's why I really wanted to make sure the display was going to work because I didn't want 300 displays and 300 boards that didn't work. But I think we're pretty good to go now. So uh, yeah. Very exciting on the ESP32 rainbow front. If you haven't ordered it already, why not go over to Crowd Supply and place an order? Uh, every little helps. Um, this should be a great project. So thanks for watching, and I hope that was useful.